you. We want to bless your name and give you glory for this occasion that you've given us for your word. We pray that you yourself, O oh Lord, will articulate the word in such a way that, Lord, when it goes forth, it will accomplish for which it has been sent. We bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Some time ago, um, I talked about threefold enemies of the Christian and what we only look at one of it, that was the devil. And today I want to look at the second part of it. Really the threefold enemies of the Christian. Um, they are the devil, the world, and the third one is the flesh. The one which most of the time we miss is the world. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I'll concentrate on today. And the main verse that we're going to use is Second, First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. We're going to read it first. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 16, please. For all that is in the world, the lust of the f flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. So, the main idea here that we have, okay, let's look at 17 first. And the world passes, passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So the main thing that we have here, you hear the, the message, the word, the word, the word, the world, rather. What does that mean? Um, we tend to think of the world as the sinful acts that men do. But that is really not what this signifies. Um, it's rather what the sinful things that men do are the results of what the world leads to. I will explain it later on as we go along. The world and its ideas keep changing day on and day out. Um, every generation has its own ideas that comes out of the world. I remember that when we were growing up in Ghana, it was a taboo in Krife for the um, women to wear trousers, which was an idea which was brought up, which it's ridiculous, but that is what they were doing. The women who wore trousers were really thought of as if they were horse, let me put it that way. Which was sad because of this, some people didn't even bother to join um, the Christian Union. Because if that was their mentality and idea which came, they didn't want to have anything to do with it. So what is this idea? The world. If you want to get the idea of the world, we have to look at it from the original Greek. The world is called cosmos. And what does cosmos mean? There are many dimensions to it, but in this context, um, it means, I'll have the definition here, an orderly arrangement of individual parts to form an integrated whole. Um, so just like soldiers who have been put together for a formation. And then the thought of it is it brings out beauty, something which has been orchestrated, put together in such a way that it brings out a beauty. And also in the Greek, it often expresses the idea of beautiful arrangement, adornment, and decoration. So what does it give us? We translate it as a world. But really what it's saying is it is an unbiblical arrangement of non-biblical arrangement of thinking. Things, things that the world has put together, which is contrary to the word of God, and that type of thinking, that is what is called the world. One guy sent me some WhatsApp some time ago, uh, asked a funny question, which falls into it. He says a child asks something like, well, the Bible says, the, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then he also says, don't love the world. Um, so if God loves the world, why can't we love the world? That was the question. But 
The first world that God was talking about is he was talking about the people in the world. This world that we are talking about is the system which has been put together and which directs our thinking. Um, so we can consider it as a world system or worldly system. So we can also translate it as worldliness. So that is how it is. So God is saying that the system that we have in this world is not his. A lot of the thinking that we have, a lot of the problems that we have in terms of Christian living comes to the fact that we don't understand what the world is. So in my going on, instead of using the word the world, I would rather use worldliness so that it becomes a world system, so that it becomes clear what the world really means. So it's a biblical arrangement or system of thinking which controls everything that we do. That is what the world means. Um, one thing which comes in is this idea which has been put together representing the world is, is very beautiful, desirable and enlightening in a sense that um, when you, you hear it, it sounds good. Um, somebody will say, very good, so you tend to, if you don't take care, you will fall for it. And that is exactly what Eve fell into when Satan came and then deceived her. And what did Eve say? He says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave the husband and he ate it. So the world system that we have, it sounds very, very good, um, but we have to be very, very careful. And that is what God is telling us that we should not fall into. And in fact, I think I'll mention here, James put it in such a way that the love of the world is at enmity with God. Um, let's look at it in James 4, 4, which oh, he says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So James is putting it, if you love the world system, the way the world do things, the worldliness, you are an enemy of God. So completely, um, the worldview that we have, another way that you can understand it is to look at the world as a worldview. The worldview that we have in this present generation, and in fact every other generation, is contrary to God. If we don't turn our attention to the word of God, we will easily fall into it. Um, and then follow it. Romans also warns us about this. So let's look at it again in Romans 12, 1 to 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it comes in again, the world, the world system, the worldview, which is contrary to God, which is really an orchestrated arrangement of ideas, um, is what God is saying that if you follow it, you are my enemy. We don't follow that. Um, we are being admonished that because we are living in the world, we have to be careful not to conform to it, not to more or less do things the way the world would do things. So we are going to look at some of the characteristics of what this world system is, what the arrangements are. Um, most of it, as I said, they are very desirable. If you hear it, um, you, you like it. But it is really a window dressing that the devil has put together so that things will seem good and proper, and then we will not trust God in that sense. Um, so we have to be careful. One, the nature and the characteristics of the world system or worldliness is really depicted in the John, first John to the system. He gave three characteristics of it. 
One is the flesh, the lust of the flesh. The second is the lust of the eye. And the third one is the pride of life. And what it means is if you follow the world system, the ideas which have been put together, that is where you end up. It will be appealing to you. What is this lust of the flesh? The lust of the flesh is basically anything that happens to satisfy the impulses of the fallen nature. Um, the fallen nature of a human being, when Adam fell, we got corrupted. And it's mainly, as far as the flesh is concerned, it's something like, it's all based on feeling. Something like, if it feels good, just do it. And the, the advertisers who really try to entice us into it, it will say something like, you deserve all the fine things of life. So you want to satisfy the flesh. That is what the whole thing is. So that is the last of the flesh. Everything that it feels good, you've got to do it. I feel like having this, I've I got to have it. So this is an idea of a world system that we've all bought into, that we've we got to be careful. The second one is the lust of the eye. And what is this lust of the eye? That is really the desire to have things that catches the eye. Um, it's more concentrated about external things, like greediness, if I see it, I want to have it. Envy and covetousness, that's where it goes. So mainly, it's associated with envy. The first one is if it feels good, I want to have it. If it looks nice, I want to have it. That is the, the, the second one of it. And the third one is the boastful pride of life. So what is that? Um, that is mainly concentrated on ambition and attitude and the desire to control. And then you say that I have this. So if you see, at times we hear that, that somebody is bragging in the pulpit that I have so many cars, the person has fallen into, right into it. Either he's fallen into the lust of the eye or the boastful pride of life. So he has bought into the world system, not even realizing that it's not Christian. God says that if you buy into it, you are my enemy. That's what James is telling us. And Paul was here a little bit nicer. He says, that don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Christians, we are different. We are supposed to think differently. We are not supposed to follow things which will make us feel good. We have to look at things which God says we should do. We are not supposed to follow things which, when we see it, we won't have it. That is not what it is. It is not your best life now in this world. It is the word of God. God has a purpose. The reason why he left us here that once you become saved, he doesn't just slip into um, heaven immediately. There is a reason for that. And the third one, as we said, is it all goes with pride, ambition, self, what I want to have. So that is what. One thing is there are certain things that the world system favors. The world look at people who don't believe in God mainly and they are successful, those are the things that the world looks look for. They will teach you to be ambitious so that you'll be able to get everything that your sinful nature will let you get. Um, it will also encourage you to possess anything that you can possess, like amass wealth incredibly, and by every means that you can, you got to do that. And after that, it will make you feel like, yeah, my hands have made it. Yeah, we become proud of that. These are the things that the word of God is referring to as the world. It's actually the worldview, the way of thinking which controls our behavior. And unfortunately, it falls into the three characteristics. Satan is underneath orchestrating it. And because it's appealing to the flesh, we we'll, 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 we'll take it. So that is the way it goes. So all the things three fit together, the devil, the world, and the flesh. Satan is pulling the strings for us to get into this world system. Every concentration is about us. And then, because it's also appealing to the flesh, you easily buy into it. And then that is how it is. 
So if you hear nowadays that uh, the prosperity preaching is just that they fall into this trap. The trap that you are in the world, you have to have the best things of the world. The trap that you are a child of the king, so you have to have the best things of the world. Those are all these things. We fall into the world straight. God says we are enemies if we follow that. Um, unfortunately, we don't seem to think that that is a, an issue. And when people are talking about it, others keep on arguing that, yeah, we've got to have the best in, in life. Really? That is not what God says. If you are looking at Christianity, you've got to look at it carefully. The word God has a different plan. And this is not his plan. Um, let's look at James 3, 15 to 17, and see what James brings in here. It says the wis this wisdom, here the wisdom is really the wisdom of the world system, the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of the worldview that is prevalent in our world. This wisdom descended not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, devilish for where envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil way but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy what i want us to concentrate on is the first part of it so it's the world system, the wisdom in it. If it feels good, I'll do it. If it looks appealing, I would like to get it. If I get it, I'm able to get as much as I want. I want to control, and then I feel good. I'll boast about it. And in effect, it's all concentrated about self. What James is saying here, what God is really saying is, those type of thinking, they are earthly, they are natural and they are demonic. Why is it earthly? It's earthly because it's it, the, the, the horizon is very short. It's only looking at things on earth. Um, what will I get on earth here uh, within, let's say, 100 to 150 years on earth? That is what I'll get. That is what we are concentrated on. Forgetting that um, in the millennium, the rain is 1,000 years. Even compare the two and see 100, 150 years and then 1,000 years. If you want to get your best 100 now and lose your 1,000 your, your years, think about it. If you look at it, it's, it's really silly, but we don't tend to think about it. We look at it from the earthly perspective. It doesn't look beyond the earth. That is all that matters. And then James is also saying it's natural. Why is it natural? It's natural because it appeals to the human nature, the fallen nature of a human being. And the big word is unregenerate human beings, those who don't know Christ. And what it means is the influence of the Spirit of God is not there at all. It's all based on me, 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 self, 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 what I want to achieve. And the third one he says is demonic. Why is it demonic? Because the world system, the world view that we have is really uh, constrained by the devil. So Satan is the one behind it. That is why it's demonic. Most of them are um, doctrines of demons. And if you remember the last preaching, the devil was perhaps the wisest creature ever created. He's not going to make the things unappealing to you so that you wouldn't. He knows the way the flesh works. So what he has designed is designed to appeal to the flesh so that you will follow. So that is what it's all about. Um, if we look at the Old Testament, this idea comes in, but it will give some examples of what happens when we fall into the trap of the world. Um, if we look at it, most of the time the Bible refers to Babylon, um, which is the epitome of worldliness. And how did Babylon come into being? It was uh, something founded by Nimrod, which was um, one of the grandsons of, um, of Ham. And he put people together, and then what he said was, we want to make a name for ourselves. We, don't, we want to do things for ourselves without God. 
So that is how it translates into the Old Testament. It basically a defiance of God. You want to do things without God. And then he tried it. And when God saw that so early, if they follow this, it will be so bad. So what did God do? He came in and confused their language. And when that happens, it then it slowed um, the worldly system. One group will have a different type of worldview and another will have a different type. So that prevented them from uniting. So that is what is happening. If we look at it, this also manifests itself. Um, let's look at first Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. Here he's talking mainly about the devil, what happens when you fall in the world, which is being orchestrated by the devil, and this is the origin. He says, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation and in the side of the north. 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. So, once you fall into the world system, what we are going to end up, or what we will end up is, you think I can do things on my own. I will be the best. I'll be on top. I'll be above everybody. Um, and that is the idea, and I'm, go I'm going to do all of it without God. And that is where the problem starts. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Um, he knew what he was talking about. That if we follow this path of worldliness, we'll run into trouble. If we look at the Babylonians, they exalted themselves, they considered themselves as the queen of all kingdoms or the lady of all kingdoms. Let's look at Isaiah 47 um, from verse 5. We'll go up to 13, but I'll go through it by a bit. It says, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the lady of kingdoms. So, what did the Chaldeans do? They were very powerful militarily. Things were, <coughs> things were going very well for them. And they considered themselves as the lady of the kingdom, meaning that they are the best. Among all the kingdoms of the world, they are the best. That is, they exalted themselves. And then, let's move to the next verse. Think probably. Okay, go to the seven. And thou said, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. So, when you become proud, when you fall into the world system, you tend to think that, yeah, everything is rosy for you forever. And that is what the Babylonians fell in. And they didn't consider that the end was coming, that the judgment of God was on the way. So, if we fall into the worldly system, that is where we'll end up. And remember what James put it. He says, if you follow it, you are the enemy of God. And we don't want to be enemies of God because of our position in Christ. We don't want to be in that situation and then try to move back. So let's go to verse 8 again. Therefore, hear now this. Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwells carelessly, that says in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Here, yeah, let's wait a little bit. So, once that you look at the world system that we have, which is concentrated on self, and what I will get, and me, me, and me, and as the Chaldeans were saying that they were living in pleasure, they were doing very well. They lived carelessly. And then after that, they committed what I call the abomination. They say, I am. What that means? Is, um, let me put it in chi a little bit. I'll translate. Meaning that 
it's just like I, I am. <laughs> so that is uh, the way it is. you tend to think that yes, you have made it. Yes, it's me. Yeah, this is my hands. I'm the one. Something like that. That is the idea that you, you get. And that is the worldview that God wants us to be out of it. And it's unfortunate that at times people tend to think those who have that idea that um, if you're a Christian, you are God, they tend to say, I am. They should be very careful what God is saying here. But when you tend to think that, yeah, you've made it, you've reached, you've arrived, you've got to be careful. And you think you did that by your own strength, by your own power. You are in a very slippery slope. Let's look at the nine. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The laws of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitudes of thy sorceries and the great abundance of thy enchantments. What also comes in here is the Chaldeans were thinking that everything was good. They didn't realize that God has already pronounced judgment upon them, that he was going to ruin them. And one thing also that happens is when you leave God out, when you follow the world system, you tend to move into things like sorcery, astrology, and in fact, they call it secret art, and it, what it is is occultism. Unfortunately, nowadays, in my reading, I've come across that even Christians are advocating that, which is very, very dangerous. And the, the theory goes something like this, that the devil was the one who was living with God, and because of that, um, he knew a lot of things about God, so things that he's doing is what he has copied from God. So we should go to them and learn. That is stupidity. If you follow that, you are bringing yourself into rain. And some Christians are bought into it. And why do they want it? Because it's all power. 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 That is the third part of it. The boastful so pride of life. That is power they want. And it doesn't even end there. Other groups also have moved in another direction. And what they say is, look, if you want to have power with God, you have to, they put it in a nice way. You have to be, have the presence of God. You have to be in God's presence. When I, I saw that, there's something that I, it attracted me to look at it. When I saw, they put it like practicing the presence of God. And I said, hmm, this sounds like Meister Eckhart. And if you don't know, Meister Eckhart was one of the uh, Catholic Dominican monks who was advocating something like that. And the idea, the whole idea is you, you do what the Buddhists do, what the Hindus do. All that it means is, in a normal terms, it's called transcendental meditation. And they frame it nicely. They call it briefing prayer. They put it another way, silent prayer, what we are doing. The basic principle that um, is called shamanism. What it just means is, you try to blank your mind, you get into a realm which is a spiritual realm, you become euphoric, you get in touch with something they call guardian angels, they tell you things, you become associated with them, and then you move on. This is pure sorcery, magic. And that is what God is saying, that if you move away from the word of God, that is where you end up. And people, Christians, because of power, this is the direction they are moving into. They are entering dangerous grounds. If you look at Israel, the reason why God punished them mainly, it was because they moved away from the worship of God to the worship of the things that the people were doing to occultism. Now, this is the level that Christianity is going. We've got to be very careful. We have to stick to the word of God. Um, let's look at Isaiah 47.10 again. For thou hast trusted in, yeah, I think it's the same thing here. Um, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee, and thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none beside me. So it's all come back to the point again, that you think that you've made it, you think that you've reached, you think that you are using secret arts, you think that you are using certain things to achieve success, Let's move to the 12, please. Stand down with thy enchantment and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so, be, 
be thou shall be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. So here, God is saying that, yeah, go to your enchantment. Go to those who are practicing the secret. Uh, go to those who are dealing with the sorceries and the occultic things. And maybe you, 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 you do well. More or less, it's like a mockery of them. Um, let's look at the 13. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly progressors stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. So God is saying that, yes, now that my judgment is coming, all those your secret arts people, follow them and let's see what is going to happen to you, whether anyone can save you. Um, that is the world system that it goes to. Once that you move away from what God is saying and it becomes me, me, and me, you want to satisfy the flesh by all means. You want to get what you need by all means. You want to get power by all means. You end up in the occult. And when you get there, and when the punishment of God comes, that is how it will be. Um, One other thing which comes in is we tend to think that security comes from money. Yeah, money can do a lot of good things. Um, as Solomon said, uh, money uh, satisfies all things, something like that. Um, that if you have money, it's good. And really, money is not the issue. Um, as Paul was telling Timothy, he says the love of money is a root of all evil. It's a root of all evil, meaning... That is not the money, it's the ambition to follow money, to make wealth by all means. That is a wealth system, that is what everybody is looking for. Um, if you don't check yourself from the human nature, you think that I want to make as much money as I can. Um, and we tend to think that if you have that money, you gain security. We've seen millionaires and billionaires killing themselves. They had all the money um, that the world could have but they ended up being miserable. If we look at Ezekiel 27, it's talking about Tyre, um, king of Tyre. And what was um, something which comes out from Tyre was, it was they, they were very successful. Um, and then what ended up, at they prided themselves in, in, in greed, um, like something like greed is good. And anyone who they, they follow the money, let me, let me put it this way. They were famous for, they were good merchants. They follow the money. Um, in our modern terms, as someone put it, um, as long as there's dollar to be made here, that is what works for me. That is that idea, that world mentality that we have. That is what we see the world. And we got to be careful with it. And this is the trap that we've fallen into when it comes to the wealth and health type of theology which we've been proclaimed. Um, we've fallen into the trap that the, the people of Thai has fallen into. If it's money, we'll follow it. Um, that is also something that Babylon has and it's typically, that is why the Bible refers to Babylon and more or less like the epitome of the world system, the epitome of the worldliness and worldview. So in all these what shall we say? The core of worldliness, the core of the worldview, the core of the world system that we have is independence from God. That I can do things on my own, so I'll do things my way, I'll follow my path, so that I'll make it, I'll feel good about what I've achieved, I'll be able to boast about it, I'll be able to control people, Yes, everything that my eye sees, I want to have. That is the world that God is talking about. It's a type of system arrangement which has been put together, which is driving the world. And it's all because the devil is feeding on the flesh. What the flesh likes, he has orchestrated in such a way that we will end up following if we are not careful. And how the, why does it work that everybody is following it like that? And we Christians have been admonished not to do that, but to follow God. 
that James is saying that if we follow the world, we are really enemies of God. It's just because if we remember that Paul says that we live in an evil age. Another place he says that Satan is the God of this age and he has blinded the minds of the people of the world so that they follow his bidding. So in effect, what you, you can say is Satan really is in control. He's in charge. He's held every, everybody by the throat. So if you are not a believer, if you are not of Christ, you will just have to follow your master. And that is the God of this world. That is Satan. So every unbeliever will follow that. These principles of me, me, and me, if you are not a Christian, it's natural. That's what you do. You want to be rich. You want to have everything that you can have. You want to feel good. You want to be able to say, yeah, I've made it. This. Look at me. Look at the things I've amassed. It's, it's natural. That is what the normal human being would do. If you're a Christian, we are not to do that. God says that this is the world. If you follow, you are my enemy. So that is it. And the reason why every natural human being would do that is because the one pulling the strings, he has an absolute control. Um, if you are not a Christian, you cannot get rid of yourself from the devil in any way. Um, he, he has iron clad on you. So that is what it is. Um, we Christians, we've been liberated, so we are supposed to live differently. Um, there are a lot of things that God has done for us. One thing that the Bible says that if you are a Christian, we've been chosen out of the world and we are born of God, meaning that we are different. And um, so we should live differently. Um, it says in that sense that we are rebelling against the satanic system, the satanic worldview that we have. Um, that is because God has translated us from the, he says, the powers of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. So we are different. We are not supposed to be following the world as the world behaves. Um, Jesus said that although we are in the world, we are not of the world. So we should not follow the system of the world. Um, it also, Paul tells, I think, in the Philippians 3.20 that we are just like tourists in this world. Um, so we are just passing through. And there is a reason why we are passing through here. Um, we are not the citizens of the earth, we are citizens of heaven. So our relationship to the world should be different since we are not part of the world. Um, as, a be as believers, our relationship with the world should be based, or the world system should be based on what the Word of God calls separation and evangelism. Separation means that you are in it, but you are living separately. Your focus is not about me, me, and me. Your focus is about what does God want me to do. And then evangelism. And the reason being, I think, when I was passing around this morning, I think Marcus was talking about it. And the point is, if they don't know, they are going to drag you into it. In a sense that whatever they will talk about will be the world system. You have to educate them. You have to evangelize. So you have to tell them that, hey, I don't follow these principles. The principle that has been laid for us as Christians is you do the will of God, um, love God, and love fellow human beings. And if we are going to be effective, our lifestyle will have to show. If we think about what they think about, meaning that it's all about ourselves, it's all about what will make us feel good, it's all about what will make me benefit, it's all about green and what I can have, it's all about what I have and that I can boast about. If that is what we are conversation with the world is, then we are right playing into their world. We are no different than them in that sense. Um, but they will move us in that direction and they will drag, drag, drive us onto them. But the way it is, as Christians, 
we are not supposed to do that. The word of God says that le we should let our light shine that the world will know our good works and then glorify God. That is the way we have to look at it. There is, um, in conclusion, what I will say is we have to relate to the world by being different in our lifestyle and our beliefs and not being similar. The world believes in themselves. We believe in Jesus Christ. The goals of the earthly guys or the world are different. Their goals are earthly, they are looking on it as if life in this world is all about now. Once you are dead, then that is the end of it. Our goals is heavenly. We are here on earth, but life continues after death. The trust of the world, or what the world system is in the physical strength and beauty, our trust is in God and in the Holy Ghost. They seek the selfish fame and fortune we who should seek to proclaim Christ Jesus. And there are certain things that they do that we shouldn't do, so I should go about uh, uh, also into it. The world is materialistic. Um, so Christians, we should be careful not to fall into the health and the world gospel. That is no different. That is also materialistic way of thinking. The world things situational, what we call situational ethics. So Christians, we should avoid the problem of saying that we are saved so we can live our life anyway, anyhow. That is not of the Christian. The world is interested in power, and as we saw the Chaldeans do, through things like psychic power, magic, secret art, secret society, and other things. Christians, our attention should not go on dealing on demons and all those things. If we do that, we are falling into the same trap. The world put their faith in psychology to solve problems. Christians, we should not blend the world system and the Bible. Um, if we do that, we destroy the truth of God. Um, this is all because of our position in Christ. For there is one thing that we have um, in First John Five four, let's read that. First John five four. That is the last one I gave. For whatever is born of God overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. So God says that He has made provision for us, that if we are truly born of God that we are not enemies of God. We should not follow the world system. Our worldview should be different. It should not about me, me and me without God. If you leave God out, um, you run into trouble. We should not be like Pharaoh who say, who is this God that I, sh I should let the Israelites go. You, everything that we do, we have, I um, must Paul put it, God has given it to us. We have to look at things from God's perspective. Selfishness is not part of God. Greediness and envy is not part of God. Things which will just satisfy our flesh, is, they are not part of God. We have to stay away from such things. Um, we will achieve victory over false doctrine um, and concentrate on Christ if we really believe in the word of God and follow that. The world has a battle against us, and just because we have to live differently, um, so there's more or less a battle against us. They will try to draw us into their fold. We should do everything to move in God's direction. We should look at things from God's perspective. Um, the world will do things which will appeal to the sinful nature. We still have the sinful nature and we have the spirit of God in us, we should not let the sinful nature take the upper hand because if we leave the Holy Spirit, we will just follow the path of the world. And that is as simple as that. There's no middle ground. You either follow Christ or naturally you move, you gravitate.
towards the things of the world. The world view, the world system will appeal to you. Um, finally, we'll look at what John said in um, what is in John 16.33. And Jesus said that these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. God is telling us here that because he has overcome the world, it should not be difficult for us. Um, the yoke of Christ is easy. We should not follow the world view, the world system that we have, the way that the, the things that the world has put together, which is attractive to the human being that everybody follows. Um, we are in the world, so there are certain things that um, we have to do, but our attention should not be on things of the world. We should be focusing on God and what God wants us to do and not fall into the trap of the devil. This particular worldly world system is something which we miss. It looks like we are so much concentrated about um, the devil and then the other part of it, the flesh, we see it when we, we, we fall into sin, we see it immediately. But about the world system, we tend to basically we're oblivious to it. We just move along just like that. But remember what James says, the love of the world, if you love it, you are an enemy of God. May God help us to help us change our lives.